Welcome back to the Bailey Work Channel. I'm Chris, and in this video, I'll be showing you how we did the interior framing to turn this old stone building into what you see here today. So I'm hoping to show you a few videos of the finished product as we go, and that way you can see old and new alongside each other. There are a few different steps in the framing process. The first is to install what we would call dry lining here in Ireland. It's the framed wall that goes around the perimeter of the building inside, specifically to provide insulation. It's not really structural, except in the case of here, where it is holding up this upper mezzanine area. Then of course, there is minimal interior framing to divide the space up into rooms. We had to install floor joists in this section here and above the bathroom where we have a small storage area and then we had to put down sheeting on the floor and that's what you'll see in this video so i hope you enjoy the video let's get to work if you've watched my video new concrete in an old stone barn you'll know that the outlook was pretty bleak at the start replacing old lintels enlarging doorways and windows pouring and finishing concrete by hand so we had to keep the goal of the finished product in mind for some motivation. Materials have arrived and we're ready to go. And this is the first wall to go up. It's like an Amish bar ah, Beautiful. 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 I'm checking the studs for any bow and crowning them upwards. It's really handy working with small sections of wall like this. So on the perimeter of the building we have wooden plates that go down to the original concrete, which makes fixing the walls really straightforward. The future owner checks it out. It's been a good day. Our cutting station is in what will be the kitchen. Here in Ireland, you can't order a bunk of pre cut studs like you can in the US. So we buy 16 footers and cut them to length. I'm using my Dewalt laser level to mark where the walls will hit the ceiling. Previously, the roof had been finished and insulated and a layer of OSB put on. So all we had to do was add sheetrock. The perimeter walls are attached to the exterior stone wall with galvanized metal brackets every so often to give the wall rigidity. Another thing you'll find in Ireland is that dimensional lumber is not very dimensional. So you may find that some of your pieces are bigger than others 
which for a floor is not ideal. So we were taking care of that, cutting the bigger ones down to match the smaller ones. At this point, my Dewalt circular saw sort of gave up the ghost. A useless, useless saw. The whole project revolves around this circular saw. My dad took it all apart, tried a few things, but there wasn't much to be done. You can see the opening here for the spiral staircase. And we begin on the upper floor. We're gluing and nailing everything down to avoid the possibility of any future creaking and squeaking. Now it's time to let little Caitlin see what she thinks. See if you can find Grandma's room. Go ahead. Oh, it's a bit bad mess in here. Yes. What do you think? Where's Grandma's room? She was a bit taken aback at first by the smell of glue in the room, but I think she approves. What do you think? Yeah. You like it? The jigsaw puzzle coming up now. Having ascertained that the angle of the roof is 37 degrees, I went up to the wood shop and cut some custom blocks to mount on the ceiling to nail the top plate of the wall into. At this point, as every aspect of this building is custom, we had to measure and cut each stud separately. So I'm stick framing this part of the building one stud at a time. framing in the upper bedroom. The nail gun you'll see me using is a Lidl Special. The brand is Silverline. It's only about 150 euros. It, it does the job, but that's about it. So using wooden shims to get the reveals right, I've installed some slimmer framing to go around the windows. And here in the kitchen, the exterior walls are already wood framing with insulation. So we've gone with a 2x2 inner wall, which is braced on horizontal battens.
All of the other interior framing is 2x4. Anyone who's tried to combine building and videography will understand, if they're actually trying to do the work themselves, that it's time consuming to get the camera set up and record what you're doing, especially if you're dirty, you don't want to get fingers on the camera, phone, whatever you're using. So when it came time to do the drywalling, I sort of gave up videoing. Here's just a few videos while hanging and in between coats. I split the job into three sections, started with the upstairs, then did the kitchen, bathroom, utility room, and then finished with the downstairs of the main section. All handleable size chunks for one guy who's never claimed to be a professional drywaller. And that, my friends, is another job well done. After I was done with all the plastering and painting, my dad put all the trim work on, installed the kitchen, and did all the finishing touches. We're so pleased with the way everything turned out. If you enjoyed this video, please consider liking and subscribing. It will really help my channel.